How's it going, everyone? We are here to review week 17. We are here. We are ready, like dung beetles in the Sahara, to wrap up some dung in week 17 and just <laughs> roll it down a hill for you guys. Uh, how's it going, Jason? Good, because that was a perfect intro to week 17. Perfect. Yeah. Well uh, I don't know where that came from. That honestly was not planned. That was your best um, one in a while. I, I was thinking about, you know, going a different direction, but that just kind of spit out. I don't know if dung beetles are in the Sahara or not, but I guess, you know, in, in the desert of some sort is where things have become desperate enough to wrap up dung and, and roll it around. So uh, that's my take. Um, cash game defenses for week 17. You highlighted the Steelers here first. Um, what are you looking at there against the Browns? Well, it's the Browns. I mean, despite putting up some points on the board, um, you know, last week they still gave up a ton of sacks as Chargers defense. Um, and that's the thing, you know, you're looking at some pretty good sack upside and also a good floor. So even if they give up 20 points, I think you can kind of bank on four or five sacks at this point, um, just given the fact that, you know, that's what they've been allowing over the last three, 5.7, allowing four per game this year, um, allowing the most fantasy points per game to opposing defenses. Um, and while, you know, Pittsburgh is going to be resting some offensive guys, uh, this defense still has some stuff to work out heading into the playoffs. And there's pretty much no better team to work it out on than the Browns at home. So um, I'm looking at the upside here, pretty good floor at that price tag. Um, I think you can look at Seattle as well as kind of the higher priced options. Yeah, that's all those stats are all well and good. But uh, if this were the Sahara, what animal would the Steelers be and what animal would the Browns be? You know, Cleveland would just be like a helpless, like a three-legged gazelle. Just three legs, not not yeah. even four full legs. Yeah, three-legged. Like, like, am like amputated? S somehow, yeah. Or, or just like a broken or a broken leg. Like, no, yeah, just completely gone. Yeah, I think like totally amputated. Like someone went yeah. in, amputated one leg, and was like, "All right, go back out yeah. into the wild." Yeah. Yep. And then just a a, a wild cheetah, could yeah. the Steelers just go and just ravish them for you know, fifteen Fanduel points. Yeah, that's certainly. Um, Patriots and Dolphins. Uh, Patriots forty six hundred. Another cash game defense for you. Playing pretty well of late, I'd say. Yeah, they're looking really good of late. Uh, this defense has really turned around, especially in the fantasy world. I mean, 17, 17, 8, 12, and 8 over the last five games in terms of fantasy production, um, allowing 89 rushing yards per game, under 70 over the last five per game. So, I mean, you look at this this Dolphins team, it's Matt Moore, um, Jarvis Landry, Devontae Parker, sometimes Kenny Stills, um, but really J.J. is kind of the guy who makes the train go. But when you take him out, um, you know, that's what New England does to take away your best player. Um, and in this Dolphins offense, as you put, not good. Uh, Vegas has them as one of the lower total, you know, teams of the week. Uh, I just think 4,600 is a really nice price for them, especially with the way they're playing lately. The Dolphins are like those birds that um, sit on top of the hippos that like they like live in the dirt of the hippos. They just rode the NFC East like schedule. Cranes. A AFC East schedule this year to just easy win after easy win after easy win. Um, now the crocodile's going to come in and just rip their, their wings off and eat them uh, this weekend with the Patriots. So that's what's going to happen there. Um, GPP defenses, the Vikings versus the Bears. Um, the Bears are basically what a grizzly bear would be like in the Sahara, which is really hot and probably would die for from having too much hair um, and and heat exhaustion. Um, so the Vikings looking at that. Uh, what do you see here? A uh, whole matchup for Minnesota. I mean, pretty disappointing season. I can't anticipate them being thrilled for this week, but um, pretty decent matchup against this Bears team that, sure, you know, they can put up some points, but – you know, as we saw last week, um, this Matt Barkley, you know, fella, I think, you know, throw us around a couple of good games, you know, has made Cameron Meredith a, a fantasy viable option. But overall, I still think this one is, 
you know, it doesn't match up well. I still think Minnesota at home, you know, we looked at their numbers. They've played some pretty good def- or offenses and they've really struggled. Um, still averaging, you know, 1.5 takeaways per game, over two and a half sacks per game. Uh, I think at that price, it's a viable swerve. I think looking at the Vegas totals, it's not really thrilling for the Bears. Um, those corners match up well with those wide receivers. So I think you give that into consideration when tossing Matt Barkley into the fire. Um, you know, I think there is a high upside, you know, team here, especially with Harrison Smith back. Oh, oh he's going to be back this week? See, si, senor. That's good news for the Vikings. I, I think I like that a little more now. Um, but yeah, overall, the Vikings are basically just a an old hyena just chilling there. Can probably still get the kill, but uh, certainly not what it was, you know, in its prime. Yeah. Um, the the Cardinals and the Rams. I mean, this just is is mean um, <laughs> at this point. Can we just leave the Rams alone, please. Um, what what are you looking at here? Well, it's the Rams. I mean, you had Kenny Britt hobbling off the field last week. You know, Tavon Austin rushed for his 21-yard touchdown or whatever it was, and then you didn't see him for the rest 30. of the game. Th- whatever. Yeah, you know, because yeah. you, watch, you yeah. watch the Rams game all the way through for yeah. some reason. Um, yeah. But looking at this, you know, Los Angeles has failed yeah. to kind of protect their quarterbacks this year, 2.8 sacks per game, uh, allowing 3.7 over the last three. Arizona's pass rush is pretty solid. Um, I know their corners have struggled a little bit of late outside of, you know, Patrick Peterson, but um, there's no one really on this Arizona or uh, Los Angeles passing attack that kind of frightens me away from that. Um, despite Arizona giving up some points this year, still a top five fantasy scoring. Um, Los Angeles allowing the second most per game to opposing D's. Relatively nice price. Um, I like kind of pairing up David Johnson and Cardinals D as a correlation this week. So I think that's where I'm going to be headed. That's fair. Um, the only thing I worry about is, you know, they've been struggling with the little little slot corners lately, um, or slot receivers. Tavon might, you know, take another one to the house. But even if he does, you know. Okay. They're, well, they're, take they're, your seven the points. Rest, and, right, yeah, the rest of the day, that's going to be seven <laughs> points, you know. <laughs> that's It's going to be that big play and then nothing else. So um, even that isn't that much of a worry. Um, Redskins, you know, playing the Giants – game overall um but you know interdivisional re- matchup um neither team should be resting players so it could be a fun one yeah i mean i'm looking at washington and tampa bay obviously the two teams that are going to be need to play for something before you know the packers game uh, there's still a lot in the line in that nfc wild card um i'm looking at washington here because one relatively low total for the giants um in watching this giants offense it's not good it is not fun to watch outside of Odell Beckham's catches from now on time, but it's not good. You take him out of things, put Josh Norman on him. We'll see how that goes. Um, you know, I'm not really looking at Eli Manning as kind of a, a guy I'm shying away from. I think there's multi pick upside. Um, you know, I think Washington's defense is going to be buzzing after last week's performance, and especially given the fact that they need to win this game to even have a shot at making the playoffs. Um, I think 4,600 is a relatively decent price. Uh, and I think there's some, you know, decent upside and you're probably going to get them at pretty low ownership as well. Mm, interesting. Oh, my friend. I like it. Yes. Um, I have no analogies for this game other than, um, you know, the Cowboys are, are the people with the spears and the Redskins and giants are just, you know, getting slaughtered. Um, so that's all I got there. Yeah. So uh, that's that's what we're looking at for FanDuel. Uh, anything else you want to throw out there before we head out? Oh, just a whole lot of crap this week. Yeah. Be the dung beetle. Be one with the dung, as they say. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, as always, if you like these YouTube videos and our strange topics of conversation, give us a like and subscribe. If you want to check out Jason's non-Sahara um you know based article dailyfantasycafe.com if you uh you know want to throw a comment in throw in your favorite sahara animal please be more than welcome to uh and as always good luck with your roster construction this week one less point than me and uh we will see you guys next week